It was a bat bag, like oh, a was it East? Uh, what's the name of it? Easton, Easton. Easton bat, yeah, Easton bat bag underneath and the under the bed, and it is full of VHS box? tapes of okay. Pete Rose okay. highlight reels. Pete Rose, yeah, <laughs> he likes so he likes watching like the confrontation, <laughs> like the bad boy image. You know, he puts them in. He's like, he gets a quick giggle. You know? <laughs> I'd say it'd be Mattingly. Oh, it'd be Mattingly. You think so? Oh, Don Mattingly was my man. I love that guy. <laughs> love that guy. Welcome to Oil & Whiskey, an Ironclad original. I am Josh Henning. I'm Phil Gerber. I'm Jeremy Gerber. Welcome to Oil & Whiskey, an Ironclad original, presented by Blade HQ. Just go to bladehq.com slash oil and whiskey and shop their selection of knives. While you're there, check out the new knife that they got that they're dropping here soon. I forgot the name of it. It was pretty damn cool. Dropping on October 18th, they say. A, uh, like a gravity OTF. Yeah, the, X, the XO from re Knives. So check out the XO from re Knives on, that's R-E-A-T-E. It is a very cool, like friction, open handle, gravity, it's like bad the, OTF. The best of both worlds. You get yeah. that OTF action, but a little flipper action. It looks badass. Yeah. It's cool. Check that out from Re8 Knives from Blade HQ, of course. Uh, today's guest is Mike Herman of H&H Flatheads, the preeminent expert in Ford Flatheads. We're also going to do another round of taking shots. Taking shots. It's a new. It we is. don't have it. It's not. It's not time. We for don't anything. have a theme song yet. No. We're nowhere near that. We're, yeah. we're getting close, but we're probably what about a week away from dropping that single. I think so. Yeah, the acoustics in the you know the beat lab were a little off, so not feeling good about releasing it just yet. Mike Kerman is the owner of H and H Flatheads in La Crescenta, California. H&H Flatheads is the foremost Ford Flathead rebuilding specialist, rebuilding all early Ford Flathead engines for Model A's, B's, T's, and V8 Ford Flatheads. Mike's acquisition of hot-rodding legend Barney Navarro's speed equipment line was followed by several other exclusive distribution deals, solidifying Mike's H&H Flatheads as an engine builder with nearly limitless, customizable options. To learn more about H&H Flatheads and view their catalog of offerings, visit their website at hnhflatheads.com. Or you can follow them on Instagram at H and H Flatheads Forever, or find them on Facebook, which most Flathead owners are on. H and H Flatheads, and so it begins. Mike Herman, welcome to Oil and Whiskey. Yes. So I've got one well, first question for before having you. me. That was very nice of you. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> I figured we'd get the niceties out of the way. Yeah. Right here at the beginning. All right. uh, <laughs> before we get into how you got started and all that, being of such short stature and so not good looking, how does that affected your business being out in California? <laughs> I think I fit right in out here. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> the inside I've been joke. Born and raised here. Yeah. For the last fifteen years, I think Mike has figured out a way to work into every sentence, every story, every conversation exactly how tall and badass he is. I'm shrinking. It's awful. My kids remind me every day. So what happens <laughs> you when you get old? Used to be six two. <laughs> you like? Know, does that come from blowing a knee out or something? You've got like a little sports history, uh, don't you? Yeah, I crushed two discs in my lower back, so it's kind of oh. compressing. I think. Oh, you, uh, yeah, like, I used to play baseball. Yeah. Is that from like trying to hoss so. a flathead block around? That you? How, how do you do? Uh, like no. That? I actually forgot my shop keys one day and I jumped over the fence and landed on my heels when I was wearing flip flops. And that was it. Damn. No you lost sports it. injury. And you lost an inch just like that, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been like 15, it's been 15 years of that. So <laughs> you got to come with a better story. That was 15 you. years ago. I know. I know. I should have been like running from the cops or something, but I just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> So you you grew up in Not much. in this and uh, grew up in the dad in your dad's shop learning about all this stuff. So take us from the beginning how all this how this got started. Oh uh, well, you know my dad's been doing this since uh, seventy two, and he did like the four cylinder motors, um, my whole childhood and everything. And you know, uh, 
I mean, we came up, but he never really put us to hard work kind of thing. And uh, it was mainly just, you know, do school, do baseball, and this will be here kind of thing. And I built a car with him when I was like, I think I started when I was like 14 to like 17, uh, 1956 Ford panel. So that was like really my first lesson of go pick that tool up. And that's how, that's how you learn. You'd be like, go get the vice grips. And I'll come back with like channel locks and he'd like freak out. So <laughs> yeah, I started as a tool gopher too. Me and Phil both got got to do that oh yeah i, I, I finally holder yeah i finally know? went and complained to my mom like this is bullshit dad just makes me get all the tools i remember going out there and she's like you gotta let him do something <laughs> we were little kids right? yeah. yeah i mean you're holding the flashlight it's like shaking because you don't want to get yelled at and he's like hold yeah. it still god damn it <laughs> Dude, was he a smoker by chance was oh it? yeah marlboro oh. reds two packs Hell a day yeah. you know the whole marlboro man with the giant forearms and just it was the typical 80s dad you know yeah. kind of thing it's just Har- like harley man. davidson a marlboro man yeah, yeah. It was, me and phil were smoking like half a pack a day when we were like seven or eight years <laughs> oh, old yeah. you'd, you'd be <laughs> leaning over that fender and you know the, the cigarettes mm-hmm. hanging like right in your face right yeah and you're just oh, yeah. trying It'd to play it cool you know like yeah. i'm good this is this is cool i'm learning <laughs> It'd be we're working smoke in your eyes <laughs> yeah. you know you're just tearing up he was like this far from a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've secondhand smoked more than most people have firsthand smoked. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, when the, the cherry rolls onto your hand, you can't shake. You have to hold firm oh, yeah. with the flashlight. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you? <laughs> you just burnt. quit being such a fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it really teaches you <laughs> the difference between pain and injury That's real right. quick. <laughs> that would not work nowadays, would it? Oh, I don't think so. No, way. no. no. <laughs> so you started off now. Working. Now people, their vape powder gets to. <laughs> yeah. So you started out working, working with the old man in the garage, huh? Yeah, yeah. And then I, uh, I went to college and played baseball out in Colorado. And uh, when I came back, I was looking for like a normal job, which uh, thank God I didn't get. But uh, I was working for my brother for a whole eight bucks an hour. It was amazing. So much fun. Uh, and we were out in Scottsdale at the Good Guys Car Show, and Rod and Custom Magazine was working for my brother, just you know, in the booth. And my friend Jim Rizzo asked us, um, he asked my dad, Hey, I want to do an article on flatheads. And my dad's like, Sure, we'll do it, you know, whatever you want. And he came in to the shop, and my dad just told me, He's like, get in the picture, get in the picture. And he had me like standing at the boring bar and standing at all these machines that I've never used before. Never worked on a flathead. I didn't even know what they were. And so I'm just sitting there like posing, tearing down motors that I didn't know what I was doing. And it was like nine pages, one issue and like 10 pages the next. And the phone really never stopped ringing. It just started going. And my dad's like, this is what you're doing. You better learn quick. And so I had to like learn how to do all the machine work, do all the tech, learn about the different motors. I mean, I had no idea. And I had to learn on the fly. I would have to sit there on the phone when he talked to customers to kind of hear it and read as much as I could and just do as much hands on as I could. And I mean, now it's like uh, 20 years later. It's all from a, yeah, from a, a fluke kind of thing. He wanted to put the tall so. one in the ads, huh? <laughs> the tall, good looking yeah, one. Yeah, right? <laughs> It's like, it's like it's your like brother's your brother's tough to look at. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that is an absolute. We still do that. We yeah. still do that. <laughs> That's an absolute first. I mean, we've heard a lot of interesting stories, a lot of great success stories, but that. That's not like one you would generally say. Like, so if you want to get started in the hot rod industry, here's what you do. Yeah. Right. Just- you- like pick up yeah. some <laughs> metal shape and tools, put a hot rod in the background, get the phone yeah. ring and then call the dudes it out. from the magazine and then figure it out. That's, yeah. And I luckily cool. like saved all my money from like graduation from high school and college. So I had like 1500 bucks in my name and I thought I was rich, you know? And so I like bought into Offenhauser company. Like they needed a, you know, initial buy-in and that was like my whole life savings, 1500 bucks bought into them and started selling their parts and 
I mean, it kind of snowballed. I mean, it was really learn on the fly, learn very fast. When you went out there to play ball, you got a degree as well. Uh, uh, what'd yeah, you, what'd you I got a, a double major in uh, business management and marketing. So it kind of works. You got a little, little sense about what you're doing then. Yeah. 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 Like it helped. It definitely helped. Give me a little leg up. So. It, once you got into doing the flatheads, like from day one, was that structured that your dad and your brother are, they're doing the four banger stuff and are, you're like yeah, separate definitely. entity uh-huh, exclusively 100%. doing the like V eights. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then I've expanded to the point where I'm like, I do Lincoln V12s. I do Lincoln 337s. I do Y blocks, Hemis, nail heads, Cadillac motors, early vintage stuff, because it's just like people keep calling. So I got to do it, you know, at one point. Most of the time I try to say no, but uh, like if it's a, and I get some real oddball, like early Lincoln V12 K member motors from like the 1930s where they're like three piece motors and some really wild stuff sometimes. That's got to be no. cool. The cool part besides just building the engine is we're like playing archaeologist on some of that old crazy shit and Ooh. trying to dig in and find it, you know, that it really weren't putting that on the internet back then, really. So you could <laughs> yeah. just Google it. And then also like deciphering yeah. what just because it's old rare and looks cool doesn't necessarily mean it like work worth a shit even back then right so how do you decipher no. that with all like the crazy overhead valve conversions and is there stuff out you, there that you, just doesn't work that's not even worth resurrecting oh yeah yeah and some people like bring in some motors and i, I have to tell them i'm like it's junk like unless you find a new one like i can't do it because they want to or like something that like sat in the bottom of a lake and they're like well it was my uncle's and i'm just like well I don't know, start searching eBay or, you know, some forums and try to find something better. But I mean, some things are past the point of return, you know? So you just kind of, I kind of got to be a little pickier on uh, what I try to fix. Because if you try to fix something and I spend, you know, eight hours doing something and it's no good, I mean, that's a day wasted. I mean, not not that I work eight hours a day, but I'm just saying. Right. It's close to that. Jeez, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, man, that's a, that's a long day. <laughs> killing yourself over there. <laughs> Walk us through the whole uh, Navarro deal. and It's kind of one of the, the bigger names in the flathead world. And I know you started out, you know, just H&H and you've acquired the, uh, the Navarro deal and had a, a relationship with Barney. Yeah, that uh, that just really fell into place. Like, I mean, it was right time, right place. I met Barney and um, right when I started because I needed to buy a pair of heads for a build. And his shop was seriously like three miles away, four miles away. Went down there and met him. And, and he he really liked me just because I was probably the only person in his my 20s that he's talked to in, you know, 30 years that liked a flathead. And, uh, and I just, you know, built a rapport with him and bought parts from him and bought parts from him and never haggle, you know, you never haggle with someone like that who built a name and a legacy. And he just always treated me fair and he was a wealth of knowledge, you know, he would always spend, I mean, anytime I went down there, it was a 45 minutes talking to him because I mean, when are you going to get to talk with a legend? And I mean, he was a genius too. Like he invented the first heart and lung pump at Kaiser Hospital out here in California because he was racing um, with Henry Kaiser, the owner of Kaiser Hospitals. And he was doing boat racing and he built this twin turbo Hemi and it flipped over and the driver almost died. And like within a weekend, he invented the first heart and lung pump, which they still have in like a glass case down there. So like he was wild. That's yeah, cool. he was a, a crazy innovator and um beyond smart, like a genius smart. So I'll just go down there and just listen to him really. And he liked me. And then probably about two years later, he just sent me a letter because I think in passing one time I said, you know, when you're ready, I'll be ready to buy the company. 
And uh, he sent me a letter and he said, I'm ready to buy the company. And I just made him an offer, you know, looked at all the inventory and patterns, made him offer. I said, yeah. I mean, it was, that, it was that quick and easy. I mean, it was right time, right place. And when I started my company, I was still living at my parents' house, you know, all, and I, I had an old car. So all I had was like car insurance, gas, and a cell phone bill. So I was just hoarding all my money. And uh, luckily I had some money to buy his company. You're, uh, it all worked out. You're continuing to make all his parts using the original patterns for heads, intakes. Yeah. And like with Barney, he always invested in his tooling. So all his patterns were like permanent aluminum molds instead of like the wood stuff, like a lot of these other companies have. And, you know, after you pour so many, when they pound the sand together, the wood starts breaking and, you know, with, you know, water, the expansion and everything, they turn to shit. And so with his are all permanent aluminum. It's like, really, I have not touched his patterns in 20 years. And we've been making, you know, more and more parts than he ever made. Every year, I mean, it, it just keeps growing. I just, it's it's mind-boggling that I, I'm still making this stuff and it's still, like, growing, it seems. So... Are you doing all the yeah, machine now, work on that stuff as well after the, you know... Uh, no, I have a guy, like, a couple miles away from me that does all my CNC work. Um, he's a small shop up, like, about two miles away, about five CNCs. So he does all the CNC work. So, but... Now I make like close to 80 different parts, I think, in that area. Wow. So as you're, yeah. you're, you're learning the deal, we, you know, you talked about your dad kind of threw you into it. You're, you're, you're learning the machines. You're learning how to deal with customers. You're learning the, the, the flatheads themselves. You're learning the parts. You're starting to get, you know, some greasy fingernails. You're working, you're building them. You start getting a little bit more knowledge. When was the first time and what was that first kind of improvement that you were like, we got to change the way we're doing this. Like I know these guys have always been building it this way, but this continues to be a problem or I think we could do this a little bit better. I know there's all kinds of advancements that you've had to do with, you know, specifically oiling and seals and stuff like that. So what was the first thing you're like, this just doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, a lot of people when I started, were still kind of like, Oh, I want to reuse these old valves and reuse this and reuse that. And then finally, I just kind of had to like draw the line. I said, Hey, better aluminum, better material, um, better valves are out, better lifter, <laughs> like all this stuff. And like, and um, really the, the industry kind of changed um, with me making more parts. And I mean, that's when Vic Edelbrock was still alive. And he saw the resurgence of flathead. So he started making more parts. And um, there was really a resurgence of all this kind of stuff. And so I would say probably like five years in was like everybody kind of jumped on the bandwagon. And they started making new water pumps. And the oil pumps were like a lot of these parts were getting like remanufactured to the point where it was starting to just order the same stuff over and over because it's tried and true. You know, Manly was making valves, SI was making valves, new lifters were being made, Iskis grinding new cams. Um, when I first started, it was a lot of like regrinding lifters, you know, valves, you're kind of using this and using that. And then all of a sudden, like everybody saw that there was money to be made and it made my life easier. People started making new flywheels MSD stepped up and started use, making uh, distributors just for flatheads and 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 the new carburetors from um, Stromberg really really changed everything because I used to have to rebuild all these old 97s and just put junk together and it's going to leak gas you know in a matter of six months I don't care what you do and uh, Clive over there in England really um, came through and started making Stromberg carburetors and distributors and i mean that just made my life so much easier i just told people i don't even rebuild them anymore because the new product is so good and like power master alternators they came through and made a generator or an alternator that looks like a generator and a mini high torque starter and that's all i put on now i mean it's not even worth rebuilding the old stuff because they came through with a product that is tried and true. I mean, I, I put out, I probably sell, you know, probably like 
200 of them a year, I get one back every other year. So one out of 400 is like amazing in this industry, you know? So it's, it's really nice that some of these, and people started coming through and making like uh, vintage wires and more stuff to make them look better. And so it's really been a group effort, I would say. <clears throat> Didn't uh, you and your dad got into the uh, Scott blowers as well quite a bit. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's been since 2005 ish. And my dad uh, retooled all the Scott blowers off of uh, an original. We remade patterns and we've been using like Holly internals. And I mean, that's been going strong for, I probably have eight or nine of them on back order right now. I mean, Holly's kind of difficult to get parts from right now, but uh, it's been a, it's been a great product. I mean, it's worked and it really brought back the nostalgia, you know, and made it accessible for people. And better than a 471 you know, I, blower thrown on the top of there. Oh, well, I don't know. That 471 is massive. I mean, at least the Scott fits under it, like a, a hood of a 32. But that 471, I had one of those on my 39 coupe for a while with the 471. And, and that thing, that thing was pretty fast up the on ramps. Yeah. Was, yeah, we ran one. Of I your, mean, we ran one of your flatheads with that Scott blower on it, a 29 uh, Roadster. For the five. Oh, that's right. That one builder's choice out in, uh, in Columbus. Yeah, years ago, it was a five speed behind it. And that was a, like a pretty rowdy car is a hell of a lot of fun to drive it's like it's not gonna like scare you by any means you know but it uh no. it'll do enough to accelerate and you're like you really feel like you're driving real hot rod i mean you'll get Especially like the sound yeah you'll get rubber and second gear the blower makes cool noises and it's it's just fast mm -hmm. enough and what that's probably yeah what like 300 horse is that what you get out of something like that yeah about 275 yeah i mean that's really like in a light car that's more than enough i mean all these people that think they need a thousand horsepower are just out of your mind. It's when you <laughs> see Hellcats going to the side of the road. We've, we've like been taking that. LS motors and pulling two to four spark plug wires off to compete with your flatheads. <laughs> yeah. It sound like. Tuh, tuh, tuh. <laughs> what, uh, after, uh, after your, your impromptu modeling career for your dad in the, uh, in the, you're never going to live that one in down, the magazines. The what was the what was the first motor build? You know that either went to a high end customer or, or a big build or a magazine. Uh, what was the first one? You're like, holy shit! This is this is we're doing it now. We're hitting it. Mm -hmm. My first one. I mean, I, uh, right out of the gate, I got lucky enough to start building with like Brizio, Roy Brizio up in South San Francisco, and uh, and it might have been one of his cars. Tougher cars. That's a hard one. It's been 20 years. Was, so there was there just one particular car, one builder, uh, something that really just uh, like catapulted you to the forefront? Uh, no. Other than the roadster no. shop. I mean, we put that, <laughs> I, we put that supercharged flat in it. I mean, I'm sure that did pretty well. <laughs> I think it's been a full grind. It's been yeah. a full grind. I don't think anything ever catapults you anywhere because everything nowadays is you know here there and gone the next day kind of thing i mean i've been fortunate enough to build you know motors for you know chip foos you guys brizio build them for boy Covington back then i i one of my favorite ones like i built one for wally parks he's the founder of the nhra that was really cool because i was super uh you know new in the industry and someone was like you want to build one for wally parks and I really, I don't even know if I, his name clicked in my head at that time, but I was like, sure. And then I got to meet him and, and find out who he was. And I mean, that was pretty cool. And I, I built some other motors for like historic cars and old Amber winners and Gene Winfield and, and people like that. So, I mean, it's kind of been just a steady, gradual grind of, I don't know if anything ever really makes you be that guy it's just you just got to be consistent and, and you know truthful and nice to your customers kind of thing and just take care of 
when shit breaks because shit does break. It I does. mean, I'm building motors that are like 80, 90 years old. So nothing's perfect. And so you just got to take care of your customers. I don't care. You got to bend over backwards sometimes. And, and what's the worst builder? It. What's the worst builder you've ever had to work with? Grocery <laughs> <Throw this> shop. <laughs> 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 yeah. Josh. <laughs> you got to try. You know? Yeah, because we pulled that. We pulled that thing out, and then I pulled the cylinder heads off of it and just screwed them to the valve covers on an LS. And it was all oh, you know. <laughs> You know when I actually thought I made it, but it, I didn't make it, is when I was watching the original Iron Man movie and Tony Stark was taking apart my motor and he was like scraping the gasket in the first in the first Iron Man. And I was like, oh my God, I'm famous. I didn't get any shit. I didn't get any credit. That was for John Farbra. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was fixing so the leak. <laughs> yeah, yeah he was. I was like, warranty is over. Every time just, Tony Stark thinks he's, uh, he knows a flathead. Yeah, just right. Avoided the warranty <laughs> on video. <laughs> the, but I remember also... seeing that and I like freaked out. <laughs> you built a car that then Lego recreated, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the Iron Man car. That yeah. Okay. And, yeah. I'm and then, I'm like, you know, 15 that. years later, it popped out. And my friend was like, look, the Iron Man car. And that was pretty cool to actually have a Lego of a uh, motor that I built. That was cool. It is cool. And plus was my kids. Awesome. My, yeah, because he was in the age. He actually found it for me because he was building a lot of Legos at the time. I think it's 10 at, the, at that time. And he's like, look, isn't this the one you built? So what kind of that car was pretty was good. It? I don't like, know. I'm not familiar with a that. 32 Ford. It was a 32 Ford with like flames down the side. Is it but a roaster? Like it had like this. Yeah. My yeah, son's got black roadster, red flames. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Wyatt's got it. He's built it. It's big, right? It's like, yeah, it's yeah. Good size. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's uh-huh. got it. I didn't know that was. Well, you got an H&H flathead. Damn. House. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. You want me to sign the box? I would love <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> would you be so kind? <laughs> That's the mic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now it's coming out. How much, how much is that going to cost us? <laughs> <laughs> send the check with it <laughs> money or money order only from you guys <laughs> when did the uh the the arden thing really start getting crazy popular and and easier to like obtain i mean um you know don ferguson started making those uh i guess don orosco made them first and then don ferguson started making them probably i would say 15 18 years ago right when i started getting going and then um, I built another one for a Brizio car, and it was a full aluminum uh, Arden, aluminum block, everything, full polished with like a 471. And that was like on the cover of Rod and Custom, just the motor. And uh, after that, like it really started taking off where to the point, I mean, not taking off, I built like three to five a year, which is a decent amount for, I mean, a motor that ranges from 30 to 50 grand. So it's pretty good. And uh, and I think, I mean, every year it's just consistent like that. I got three in the shop right now. I'm also doing a V860, the early small. It's a, like a 137 cubic inch motor. They used to put them in sprint cars and midgets. And, yeah. and it was only from like 37 to 1940. That's it, like a four-year only motor. And I'm doing an Arden uh, V860, which they say there's only like 12 in existence. That'd be really and I'm doing that for... Roy Brizio right now. Yeah. And then I'm also doing, I'm making an Arden for a Lincoln V12 that's never been done before. And so we're making that from scratch. And uh, I've made the patterns and we got it all CAD drawn and um, it's getting machined right now. But it's a slow process for Are sure. You, you machining plugs and then casting the heads or machining the whole head? Cast, c- casting the heads. I already have the heads casted. And then we're machining everything out. So I have actual castings of this thing that's like, you know, four feet long almost. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty intense. It, it, it's going to look like, I mean, nothing you ever seen before. Should be That'd wild. Be so, wild. What are you doing for like intake uh, yeah, or supercharger on that? This first one is going to be fuel injected, kind of like Hillborn style, I hope. I think we're going to do them like cross. And then after that, I think I'm going to make like one kind of log manifold with with a, a log manifold with different tops kind of thing. So I could switch it up from like 
four carbs down to two carbs to a four barrel to a blower. But I mean, this is such a, a specialized motor. I mean, it's, it's, it's gotta be the wild ones that want this one. It's After not going to be in every day. Going through all that work, you can be able to reproduce them and sell multiple. Oh, yeah. I know it's not going to oh, be a yeah. huge, you know, high volume piece by any means. There's only a handful of Lincoln V12s out there, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a good amount. I probably, I'm probably building about ten V12s right now in the shop right now because I actually make the heads for them. I make three different kinds of heads for V12s, and I make about five different manifolds for them. So I make smooth heads, fin heads, and Austin fin heads. And then I make a two car manifold, a three car manifold, a four car manifold, a four barrel manifold, and a blower kit for the V12. And so, like, there's surprisingly, I mean, there's a, a Lincoln V12 Club of America. It's kind of like the Model A stuff. They're, they're out there. Where do most I mean, of they those... might not be at all the good guy shows, but there's plenty of people that, you know, love Lincolns. Where are most of those landing, like hot rods or guys all over like the world. really restoring like Zephyrs and stuff? Both, yeah. both. I mean, thirty-seven Zephyrs are the you know the sleek one. I built one for Rick Door back in the day that went to James Hatfield the Metallica, um, and then I mean, there's full full customs to bone stockers. Yeah, you know, people restoring their their grandpa's car or whatnot, you know, and. It's pretty cool because, you know, there was a lot of Lincoln limos and not a lot of them, but people held on to those. So I get these pictures back with these like super cool, like art deco Lincoln limos with my motor in them. Oh, it's pretty cool. neat seeing that. It's kind of rewarding. Yeah. All that yeah. stuff's just like art. And it's like, yeah, I, I'd love to have, I don't have, well, I guess I can always drum up a project on all the crap we've accumulated, but an Arden, like, Supercharged art, and I would just—I just wanted it in the living room. Yeah, and one of your most oh, polished, sitting right there, just to it's the best looking. Yeah, enjoy it. Yeah. Stare at it every day. Yeah, I don't want your head to get any bigger, but we were at the <laughs> Grand National Roadster Show one year, and you had a you know Arden Red Block, fully polished head, Scott blower, the polished fin uh, oil pan, and that was just the sexiest looking motor ever. Like that's oh yeah, the pinnacle of hot rod, I think. If I didn't have super oh, yeah. super nice hardwood floors, I'd put it in my house too. <laughs> that's the only reason. <laughs> yeah. It's just the wood floors. <laughs> it's keeping you from doing it. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Well, yeah. that and <laughs> yeah, the price of it. <laughs> yeah. If I could afford my own engines, I would have an Arden in that coop outside, but I had to, I had to deal with Navarro stuff. I had to slum it, you know. Yeah. When did the Dixon overhead stuff come into play? Uh, I think that is a pre-war company, and um, I bought it from the guy's son, who's still alive. Um, uh, I bought that probably about three or four years, three years ago-ish, and uh, that's an overhead valve only for the exhaust, So, which is kind of cool because you can run any intake on the, on the motor. So you can run three carbs, you can run a Scott blower, you can run, you know, your stock carb. Um, and the heads just bolt on, and then you get four, four port exhaust. Basically, it takes all the heat out of the block. And so now, instead of the exhaust as a stymies port down the center, it shares. That's why it only has three exhaust tubes coming out. It shares one down the middle, and then it goes around the ports on the outside. So there's a lot of heat in the block, and so with that one, it pulls it all out, and it's just a straight shoot in and out kind of deal. How much horsepower and did those so, yeah. make? They were ne they never really set the land speed record because Ardens are better, you know, like a hemispherical chamber kind of deal. Um, but if I did like a carbureted one, I'm sure I could get about 250 ish. And if I did a blown one, I'll get in the 300s. And I mean, it sounds different too, which which is cool because it's you know flatheads are generally all about sound and and torque, so. The flathead sounds one way, you know, the Dixon sounds another way, and the Arden sounds a different. The, so, uh, the cool part cool. about all that stuff is the is the uniqueness. I remember, you know, yeah. that was decently into the into the flathead stuff back in the day. I was building a little truck and had a couple Mercury flatheads and was but the like the different valve covers or the overhead valve cover are trying to find the weirdest low volume, low, you know, mm -hmm. low number thing to be that cool guy. Was that was what was so fun, you know, with the you know different studs and this one and that. You know, oh yeah, it, it was. That's just 
you don't have that in modern engines really of like you know that weird no. one-off. Well, that, that's because you're in the modern times so those little things you're looking at is like that sucks that's oh. that's crap <laughs> okay you know, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. and then and then the you fast, of going on summit's website yeah. and look at all the different valve covers yeah. right and then yeah. That, yeah that'd be like you know you have any you heartbeat of america out, like, I'm not even going to name names, right? But right. You, you know what I'm, you know what yeah, I'm getting at, exactly right? where you're But it's, it's funny how that works. You always seek out just like the off-brand. Right. The weird, and, you know, yeah, right. something that nobody else had. It yeah. wasn't mainstream. So I get, with that being said, yeah. I wonder, is there anything like that an old timer would look at a flathead that like you've found something or some vintage piece of speed equipment and they're looking at it and they're like, that's shit. Why would you even use that? Was crap back in the day? <laughs> that's crap today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, there, I hear that. I hear like, that a lot. Like these old timers are like, why would you use that intake? Like, and and they straight up no because they've been dyno tests, they've been test out land speed, and they're like, that was a shitty brand back then, and why is this guy using it? And I tell them, I'm like, you know, customers like certain things, they like looks, and if if you're building for horsepower, you build, you know, a big block Chevy or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's, this is more nostalgic and more of a converse, conversation piece. The shit back then was so much more put up or shut up, too, because there wasn't a lot of, like, hiding things in the data or dyno this or the OEs no. trying to push this. It was come out with a speed part. That guy would put it on that same exact vehicle that he already knows how fast it would go. It, and then they well, go a mile an hour. It, too fast it'll or, go a mile an hour faster whoa, whoa. or it will go three mm -hmm. miles an hour slower. And then it comes out in Hot Rod <laughs> Magazine and they're like, that shit sucks. I don't, I'm not. And it's, you know. <laughs> Two miles an hour or something like that was exactly what made or broke a product. Yeah. And we don't have that. Oh, yeah. Nowadays. Well, you no. do a lot of and, dyno and testing. Right, correct that. Yeah, I have. I have in the past. And and I mean, that's exactly how Barney Navarro made his name. All by trial and and error and proving it on the lake beds and stuff. Where everybody else like had an advertising budget and threw stuff out there and smoke and mirrors. And he would just be like, oh. I set this record. I set that record. I set this record. They set a record using my stuff. And I mean, that's how he proved his product. Whereas everybody else, like a few other companies, not everybody else, but you know, they threw in bigger ads and bigger ads and bigger ads, and smoke and mirrors. And, you know, so talking some about people were more businessmen and some people were more, you know, talking about engineers, talking about ads. I came across this awesome book at a uh, little antique same and it's uh i can't even see it well, it's called the speed and power handbook specialized motor oh training. yeah yeah put it on here yeah i don't know if you can see that you might i can't that. it's still no yeah. you're getting kind of old put your readers on so <laughs> the first thing in it when you open it up it's got like a little uh there's a little catalog that they slid in here and this is from, I want to say 40, what year is this? It's like four, yeah, 49, 1949. So there's a whole ad deal from 1949 in here. And the, at the top, you've got Edelbrock heads for 49 Fords and Mercury's with different compression ratios. 76 yeah. bucks. 76 bucks. Yeah. Custom made racing pistons. The choice of the California Roadster Association. You get reground cams. Adjustable tappets, Edmonds intakes, and also see, they had all this shit back in 1949 oh, yeah. already. Yeah. Slip on chrome nut covers for your valve covers. Your heads. I guess you call them heads, right? Yes, yeah. flathead. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Sweet shit. It is. <laughs> yeah, I collect some of that stuff. I love that nostalgia. It's just it's like hand drawn. I am I'm sure that we're, you know, like I said, living. We're, we're, we're trying to remember or think about an era that we didn't live in. Um, but it seemed like there was so much less noise. You know, now it's oh, yeah. nobody's nobody's taken a a brand new LT4, you know, and putting it in, you know, a land speed car and then testing a set of headers and being like these no. sets of headers right. made this much horsepower, you know, or doing that. It's always <clears throat> there's always other you know people build crazy horsepower of all, but everybody's got their own formula. And it's it's a little confusing to a customer kind of coming in that's wanting to make some big power. You've just got to kind of take a lot of people's word for it, you know, or people that have used stuff in the past be like, those guys' claims are shit, or these guys' claims, you know, this this engine went builder. on YouTube and yeah, I mean, there's just so much more noise. 
So if you're... oh yeah, the internet has confused so many people. I mean, it really has. Like because they go on forums and there's 40 people that have never built one, but they all have an opinion. So you really just have to kind of drown it out. Like especially when I do what I do is I tell them like you know these three brands are good and these three brands are bad. I kind of have to just straight up tell them like yeah, this is why we don't do that. One. I mean, I hate I hate throwing other brands under the bus, but sometimes you have to because they won't be happy with the final product. Which ones? Which are, which are the bad brands that you want to make sure you stay away from? <laughs> <laughs> I love Stromberg from yeah. England. <laughs> I love those. I love. Uh, <laughs> I like <Yeah>. Navarro <laughs> and Scat. <laughs> those are my three favorite companies. Tom like- Lee from Scat was like a mentor for me. I mean, he was an amazing guy. Uh, he makes all the crankshafts and rods and also made a bunch of VW stuff. And that guy, that guy was amazing, amazing person. So. Like you do a lot of engine builder competitions and dyno shootouts and stuff like that, to, you know, testing different intakes and different components to, to put together packages, mm-hmm. right? And yeah, I, I remember you just very subtly bragging about, you know, a certain intake that was the highest horsepower and it happened to be yours and the navarro 3-2 intake actually that motor that i did um all that dyno testing is the one in my coupe i figured it, it took like 150 flogs on the dyno so i might as well throw it in my car so it's still running but uh yeah the navarro 3 deuce outperformed everybody by a good amount i probably by like 10 horsepower which is a huge amount when you're only talking 200 so, yeah, so, I mean, they, they, we, on that one motor, they ranged from like down to like 135 horsepower all the way up to like 198, just with intake manifold difference. So that's how much difference is in these, what's your favorite, these manifolds. What's your favorite or your go-to combo for a guy calling up and being like, you know, hey, building a really traditional, you know, at Model A, wanting something that, you know, I want the look, I want, you know, I want the drivability. I'm going to, you know, have fun with this thing. Maybe not super caring about like trying to make a number or whatever. What's the go-to package that you would say, that's the one I do the most of, or that's one I like doing the most? The one I do the most of is probably like an APA, which is a 49 to 53 block with the uh, Navarro heads, Navarro 2.2 regular dual intake, which means it's set back. So the alternator generator sits in the center location. Because everybody wants it in the center location so you don't have to offset these water necks because both water necks come from each side. Right. And so it keeps it streamlined. You have the two carbs. You have the vintage look, scat cranks, scat rods, Ross pistons. And, um, you know, you put the MST in there and it just like runs all day long. And we have a couple different transmission adapter uh, combinations from like you could put a C4, you could put a a T5, a Chevy 350 behind it, or a stock three speed. And uh, anybody running and real, that's, real that's, magnetos anymore? Uh, Vertex Magneto went out of business. Did they really? And so, yeah, they're gone. I think Holly bought them up and flushed them. You know, huh. didn't see that coming. That is, uh, that so like they're cool gone. Piece. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they were a great, they were a great company. And, you know, when I used them all through the years, I mean, it was a great product. And so, you know, Holly, Holly counts money. They don't count nostalgia. So who you got? So. You'll have Joe Hunt out there. Don't, didn't they do a Magneto for it? They do a lookalike. Oh. Okay. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you're selling, you're selling all these parts as well. Not just building the complete motors, right? Yeah, definitely. I sell everything to anybody. I mean, I, I provide a lot of parts to a lot of different builders throughout the country and the world. You know, I ship parts all over. So, What's the uh, percentage of your business on complete motors versus just parts? Oof, uh, it's pretty close to 60-40, 50-50, you know, because um, a lot of people just do a little work in their garage or can, you know, change the heads and intake and carbs and do that kind of stuff. You know, a lot of hot rod shops can handle that. Um, and But I'm also, I try to build like near 100 motors a year. Huh. So it's, it's a good volume. strong juggling act. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, it's a lot. I mean, we're we're up there all the time, and I, mean, I have a good crew that's been with me for like twelve years, yeah, ten or twelve years. So is Chris still I mean, uh, we... full time disassembling motors out back? Uh, Chris, my right hand man. <laughs> 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 that guy does everything with me. <laughs> What's the number uh, one call you get from a first time flathead builder? Somebody's bought all the parts, or he's got, or he's going to do some other stuff. I already know probably what I think is going to be the first one, but in what's the first thing that you know the call's coming no matter how many times you've told him before? At first crank up. What kind of oil do I put in this? <laughs> Mobile One synthetic, right? <laughs> uh, Valvoline VR1 2050. <laughs> Lucas, if you pay me. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Have sort a of drink, kidding. Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me how you real feel. <laughs> All right. So that. So, uh, I, I, I tend to tell people the Valvoline VR1 2050 because it has high zinc in it. So you don't have to put the zinc additive for these flat tap it motors. So generally, that's like the first question. What's the first complaint? Uh, like, obviously, there's it's not like jumping in a brand new car or an injected LS3. That just pops well, off and runs and mine tend to pop off so every time uh, i tend to i well i would say 90 <laughs> percent of the time i i run them on the stand so everything i try to build is like turnkey turnkey so i True. i test run it everything you know i leave the starter alternator everything's on it time tuned so really you hook up gas and power it's and right, go ready to rock huh? uh, what yeah you, what are so, you doing on the rear mains now is that still a Two piece rope or is that a one yeah it's a graphite rope and so i mean it works well but then again it's not a neoprene and no one makes it so you're kind of stuck with what you got it's just like an old heart and ah uh, they hold way better than that <laughs> i mean my motor my coop is you know 10 years old and i get a drip you know once a month or you know once every other week you wipe it up don't cry about it. Don't be a. Uh, <laughs> so that's what I was looking for. It's like a big block Chevy, right? It's big. You, it's very tough to just completely seal the damn thing. At some point, yeah. something's going to drip out of it somewhere. So just like you said, as long as it's still dripping, it means right. there's something in it. Or, but yeah, yeah, buy, exactly. Buy a Camry, if you don't want it. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that won't leak. I hear, I hear Teslas. Teslas don't leak. Yeah, but they catch, they catch on, on fire. fire. And don't get put out. Yeah. <laughs> So if that yeah, eight not, and the batteries aren't recyclable, right? Who cares? <laughs> if that eight BA with the Navarro heads and you know, that whole setup, if that's the most reliable, like your go-to, what's the combo or what's the motor? If like you could get your hands on anything, like your dream motor, and put it in that little model A yours, what's the ultimate motor for you? Ooh, uh, Sky's the limit. I, no, I, no budget. I mean, I used to love that, that like 471 Arden. I did, I did, but now, now I'm dreaming bigger and I want that, I want that Arden V12 with the blower. I do. And I, I mean, it's never been built and I have it in the back of my head and I'm going to build it for somebody because I make this, I use a, a 6V53 blower, which is a long lean one. And That's what I was going to ask. The case yeah, it's, a, it's basically fully custom. I mean, because we cut the case down, we weld up the fins to make it look like a 471 and, and prune it. So basically it's like a football shape and you drill it from the bottom. We make all the end plates. We make the snout. We make everything but the case and the rotors. And um, I want to do that on a Arden V12. That'd which, be sick. What do you anticipate I mean, that it, it, would, would make power-wise? I don't even want to put it on a dyno. I just want just, to look at it because it's going to be artwork. Looks it's cool. Going to be art. Sounds awesome. I mean, be fucking awesome. well, that's what Seriously. I was going to ask you. The, the... Just put it on a rotary table and just put it in your <laughs> office and be like, no one else has that. That's Thirty-nine. Well, the, the length of it was, yeah, you know, my concern. Like, how did and you kind of answered that question? But yeah, I'm thinking like I've that. seen people. I've seen people put them in Model A's. You just have to cut the firewall back a little bit and stretch the frame, probably like three, four inches. I think the V12 is probably about six to eight inches snout to bell housing longer than a V8. And are they the same no. like bore? So no. it's basically just adding more They're, cylinders or it's a smaller 
more smaller cylinders. Bore. It's actually a lot smaller bore. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's a same stroke, just longer bore, tighter angle. Okay. Well, my thought before when you started that's, when you started mentioning that I'm thinking of the blower, right? You've got you know, that Scott blower. It's so bitching, right? But it, it's it's proportionate up. to a yeah. flathead V8. Stick two of them together. But yeah. you've you've got something that obviously spans that valley length mm -hmm. that looks appropriate on that, huh? Yeah, exactly. And the six V fifty three is a little tighter, and so it fits perfect. Whereas the the Scott's a little wider, and the four seventy one is just huge. Would even fit between the heads because V twelve heads that. The opening at the top is really tight to where one head is higher than the other, and the manifold actually goes underneath the head a little bit on one side. So you have to account for all that stuff when it, when you're trying to fit this stuff. But I want that a blowing cool. Lincoln V12 There's with like be... four deuces and just like oh yeah, there's got to be somebody out in your neck of the woods that would have to have that. Oh, I know. I already have customers lined up for this thing. I just, I, I, every time I tell one of my customers that I've had a few, I, that I'm doing this, like some of my high end customers, they just tell me, they're like, put me on the list. And I said, I don't even know the price yet. They're like, put me on the list. They, they just have to have one too. That's a six figure so, motor, really, huh? Oh, easy. Yeah. Easy. And so, like, I'm, I'll never have one. <laughs> <laughs> you get to live vicariously through your customers though so you get to build yeah, the motor, uh, make sure you get the card installed you know you gotta you gotta work that right you gotta say yeah we've uh, got to test and tune this so i'm gonna need to install the motor and i need oh, some I test miles right. on it yeah uh-huh maybe you take the bad castings and just uh you know make a display motor for your living room i know i know i'm ready i'm ready it'll mess up my like bachelor <clears> pad a little bit but Oh, dude, chicks dig that. Chicks nowadays they love the oh, yeah. like like Chicks love cars. <laughs> yeah. Especially in California with all the liberals. They love old yeah. gas. That has cars. how many cylinders? <laughs> that, with that gray hair and some of them young chicks you bring around, they might think that's one of the motors you used to drive around in. <laughs> well, look at this one. <laughs> so that's a that's an interesting topic, actually, to to dive a little deeper into. With you know, I'm sure. How old? You're you're mid forties. Uh yeah, I turn forty five next month. Okay, so you're obviously not seeking out girls like in their mid to late forties, right? You're trying to. Where are you going with this? I'm gonna. This is I, gonna come I, full I, circle, right? You're probably playing the field in the thirties, you know, like. Uh, right, right now I have a girlfriend. Oh, okay. Well, I guess what I was getting at is how to how does a girl respond like nowadays when she walks in and sees that Model A coupe with like an engine that's just an engine there's an engine sticking there's out no of it, hood like, what, it. Yeah, yeah where's the hood like where's the fenders what are these california hot, probably got some hot rod that, chicks though you know yeah she like a got hot rod wow. knowledge or is this no oh uh, yeah her dad was like a harley guy okay but she's great we go we go out drive around it all the time i'm just thinking like as a, if you were a single guy like let's see your kids a little younger guy in his 20s yeah. that's into you know, nostalgic hot rods going and like it, you jump on, uh, always yeah, you jump They're on timeless. Tinder timeless. or whatever, and you you pick some chick up in this I'm not high boy. On any of that shit. Like, how does that... <laughs> I, yeah, I see where you're. I see, see where I'm going, going with it. I'm it just be, right. You're probably yeah. It's a. It's not. You're not cool anymore. The same probably, as right? like pulling up in a three series BMW or whatever the you know the. the you know, some yeah. of them like it. If if they don't like the hot rod, that's an automatic red flag, and they got to go. Yeah, that's it. Make that's too much drama anyway yeah yeah uh if they don't like smelling like the exhaust that comes in the window they gotta go yeah I hear you. So. You gotta have the, i mean so. bloodshot eyes your eyes gotta be tear and you gotta smell like <laughs> fuel and oil it's yeah that's where it's at oh. my, yeah. my, my girlfriend now she really enjoys it when we we go on cruise and do all that stuff that's sweet fun mm -hmm. uh, so i i don't think i've ever asked you this one uh What's the difference between the three quarter race and the full race oh. cam? Oh, oh, oh. You've got the difference in there. It's here. <laughs> yeah. That's like the Read stereotypical hot rod so thing. That, three quarter right. race cam. It's well, he, there's, so there's, you're sounding stupid right now. Okay? There's four, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's four camshafts, right? You've got a semi grind. It's the mildest and most conservative grind offered, recommended for passenger cars. 
ground, ex uh, especially for power and acceleration. Now, the world famous three quarter grind, that's a 252 degree cam. It's designed for racetracks and semi stock use. It will operate fairly well at slow engine speeds, but best performance will be obtained in the 50 to 90 mile an hour range. Now, a full race grind, that's intended as the best fast cam for stock fours and strokes and works fine up to 120 miles an hour. So you're obviously three, not taking like three quarters, <laughs> just taking you three quarter of the way there. Right. From so, full. I, I, yeah. the speed but thing. here's the, this is the, this, uh, this is icing on the table. Right? You got the super grind. Suspension? Yeah, right. <laughs> the super grind cam. I've never heard of the super grind. Neither have I, but it is a 272 degree duration. It's ground, especially for top speed. Very rough at low speed operation. They're not taking really like gearing or like tire no. sizes or anything. Can in you the... imagine driving a 39 Ford back in, you know, what, 49 or whatever at 120 miles an hour with, this... with those <laughs> brakes <laughs> and that oh, steering? Yeah. yeah, all right. You're That's dead. A... You're dead. <laughs> that super race cam's 30 bucks, though. It says for a six cylinder, 40 bucks for an eight cylinder. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're getting rich. So there you have it. Do those numbers remember, sound... gas, gas was like 10 cents. <laughs> Do those Not, grind the, numbers sound we're right? paying over seven bucks over seven bucks out here now again hmm. it's your fault for living there yeah okay. oh yeah I, I voted for governor Newsom and yeah and biden Never that's mind. pretty yeah yeah, right. biden. yeah. <laughs> it's not his fault <laughs> yeah, it's, not his, Damn, it's only Russia. his fault right. if it goes down it's not his fault if it goes up hey, they said it We've so it's that. true man right it's, yeah it's true <laughs> Oh man, let's go back off that subject. Yeah, yeah, moving. It's so moving on. Three quarter. Now we know the three quarter race. Three quarter camp. race. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're staying out of politics and my dating life. All right, all right. moving so on. We, yeah, we just kind of <laughs> touched them all. We just dipped our toes into this. Uh, what's the best advice you've ever received? Oh, uh, this was great. This was great actually because um, it was from Pete Chimporis from Pete and Jake's and right when I started, I was like, you know, starstruck when I met him. Uh, I was super young, probably about 27, 28. Uh, and we were out hanging out and we we're, you know, after hours hanging out and it was just him and I talking. And he told me I was about to maybe start having a kid. And he said, one thing about these hot rods, he said, don't make them your life. Spend time with your kids. He goes, I made the mistake of working 18 hours a day and I didn't get to spend time with my kids when they were really young. And that's what he regretted the most. He said, I wish I told these other people they could wait because, you know, time with your kids doesn't wait. You know, it's gone. Once it's gone, it's gone. Once they grow up, it's over. You never forget that time back. And these people with the cars, they could wait. And so, I really took that to heart and that's why I leave at three o'clock because that's when my kids get out of school and that's where I want to be instead of, you know, working till seven o'clock at night, six o'clock at night and uh, missing that quality time with my kids. So, I mean, really good. that that's was, solid, that was, Very that solid. was the best advice, best business, business advice I ever got was, you know, the cars will be there, but your kids will be gone at one point. I honestly yeah. truly hope there's some, there's some guys out there listening that really take that to heart. I mean, serious moment right here that take yeah. that to heart because I heard it and disregarded it. I know we've all done the same thing, you know, and uh, there, there, it really does hit home when you say like, yeah, tell the guys with the cars that they can wait, you know, and still got to yeah. keep pushing, still got to, you know, kick ass and rock and roll and stuff like that. I, also in all seriousness yeah, i wake up earlier wake up earlier and get to work yeah. but there's like a, when the kids get out of school that's the time you got to be there yeah there's a way to I mean, manipulate that, that situation model, though, they need right? that. exactly yeah, you can yeah i get up at 5 30 in the morning mm -hmm. i was saying like the you, offset it. that first five years that's not that good no right? no not the first five years so you're I mean, good like yeah. you can i mean you can work your ass off for that yeah, that's the, what the wife's mm -hmm. for and then after that, like once they start becoming like mobile and fun and personalities and you know, then it's time to uh -huh. reel right. it back. Yeah. So put uh -huh. like put put yeah. the work in when they're not sleeping real good. Yeah, and bust they're ass till they're five. <laughs> That's the best advice. Right. Bust ass till they're five, then then, then be put home the, for yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> right. 
right now my son's 13 and I swear I had the best summer ever because uh, he's like, what are we doing this summer? I'm like, you're working. And he came down and he was working at the shop. I taught him how to like grind lifters, resize rods, balance pistons. Um, and he saw me. And before that, every time they came in the shop, they saw me at the desk on the phone doing this. And uh, my daughter and them used to talk trash. And they would be like, oh, dad's always at the desk, this and that. And one time we were coming home and Mikey was just beat from working. Like I just told him, I'm like, don't bother me. I taught you how to do this. I want you to do this for four hours straight. Then we'll eat lunch and then you get three hours straight. And so I kind of taught him this work ethic, like you're on this machine and work. And uh, we were coming home one day and my daughter talked a little trash to me and she's like, dad, all you do is sit at, sit at the desk. And Mikey was like, I'm never going to say that joke again, dad, you do so much more than that. <laughs> he's like, uh, uh, dad doesn't just sit at the desk. He's, he's doing this. He's doing machine work running around. I mean, That's it's cool. a lot. It's a lot to, yeah. Get respect from your kid too. So I had a great, a great summer with him. Is I, that, and I gave him, and you know, he earned some money and he's super happy at that age. Yeah. Is that about the first summer, like 13, my son's 11, right? So it's still, yeah still kind of difficult nah, to like, put them in yeah to get them in here and it's like we've created kind of a monster here right it's a pretty sizable operation it's kind of tough to get him in and he loves it like we'll come in periodically on the weekends not as much anymore now that he's got so much shit going on but mm -hmm. teaching him how to weld and all that stuff but you think 13 is that about the it's about the age when they could, yeah when they're starting to try to be a man kind of thing yep. and so you could kind of just do this or you don't. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty like straight with my son of like, this is why you have to do this. And this is why you have to pay attention. And so luckily I'm, I, I'm blessed with two good kids and my kid like focuses awesome. and he understands that. But it's a lot of talking, a lot of conversations you have to have with your kid to put them around heavy machinery or machinery in general, because it's dangerous. Yeah, my, my son oh, kids. my son worked with us here this last summer um for the first time. And I, I probably could have started it one year earlier. Um but yeah, you know, he was he was fifteen. He's about to be sixteen. Uh but he worked the whole summer. Um uh Phil and Jeremy were, were kind enough to say, Yeah, that's fine. Let's let's give his ass a shot and see what he's made of. But uh he, he ended up being in the CNC shop pretty much the whole time. And uh, uh Bob and Dustin, I I cannot thank them enough for everything that they've taught him. And he, he fucking loved it, man. And he worked his ass yeah. off, but it's funny how you said that because we, we have, we had and still have a better relationship now than prior to when he worked. Not that we had a bad one there, but it was like this mutual level of respect. And then there was understanding. Yeah. So like, if I'm, if I come home, we're talking about something like you're kind of in that, both in that same groove. So he's kind of like, yeah, you know, that sucked today, blah, blah, blah. So it's me and him like saying something to my wife about, you know, this happened or this happened. Or if I'm talking about something, it's quick. How, it's funny how fast in just three months of a summer he picks up and he picks up so much, some good, some not. But at the same time, he learns, <laughs> he learns that man on man bullshit talk. It's and just like his dad, he likes that you know, man on man. You know, you gotta, <laughs> it's important, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, He's the busting right. the balls and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Right. That's yeah. Where yeah. It was, that. it was pretty cool having him here. I, the respect thing though. Like, you know, that's, I don't know. I mean, he, I feel like I bumped shoulders with him more and he was flexing his muscles. I think he was like picking on me, honestly. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so he's big into Josh's son's big into like MMA you know, fighting and stuff. And he's, uh, nice. he's starting to get tough and, he started to talk more uh, trash than you do. Yeah, he's got Mike basis. Herman level. Yeah. Confidence, oh, yeah. Sure. Wow, he's he's a, wow. no problem with the confidence with that yeah. one. He's that's, that's a good, good attribute. Yeah. But it does. It does. When when you can see that light bulb kind of go off on. I do need uh -huh. to pay attention because this machine will eat me up and kill me. Like I, I could die yeah. if I don't if I don't follow exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And and you learn the 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 reason for doing everything. And I mean, I'm telling you again, Bob and Dustin, like, yeah, it didn't matter if he was mopping or sweeping, they'd tell him right then. No, you didn't do it right. This is why you didn't do it mm -hmm. right. And this is the reason you need to do it right because of this, 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 and this. And then that, I mean, in just two weeks, like it was like, Oh shit, he's, 
He's becoming a man. He's learning yeah. and he's paying attention. Yeah. They run a tight ship up there. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, they do. I wouldn't even yeah. want to go up there and like mop. I'd be like nervous. Dude. <laughs> this dude's... But it was awesome. They did. He's, he talks yeah. about it all the time. He can't wait for school to be over. He wants to come back and it's cool. He loves mm-hmm. it. My son also. Yeah. And I told my son that you'd come up and it'd be like 15 minutes left. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm done. You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm on my phone. And I go, wait, so I'm paying you to be on your phone? I'm like, there's a broom. I go, or do you want to clock out? And he got that real quick. I was like, no, I'm not paying you to look on your phone. I mean, unfortunately, that's that's a thing we all have to deal with now. But uh, it's funny how their how their early. respect for money changes too. After they get that oh, yeah. first few paychecks, you're like, I got all the money in the world. I'm rich. Let me spend my money. After a couple of he times, doesn't want to spend it. Yeah, you yeah. go someplace, and you're like, you know, like, hey, I want to get them those. Well, you've got the money, buy it. And they're looking at like, well, that's my money. Well, and they're like, it's whatever it be, it's like, it's like sixty bucks. They're and he's like, the hours. he's counting my hours. He's like, no, I, yeah, that's not worth it. Right. No, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm like, all right, yeah. When you yeah. have to work for it, you don't want to spend it near as much. I put my son on some incentive work, and I was, he was like doing this. And I said, hey, you know what? You grind every single set of lifters. I'll give you an extra like fifteen bucks. And I'm like, how many can you do in an hour? He's like, oh, probably like three or four sets if I like pay attention and do it. And I, I just put my hands up like that. I'm like, wow, you could probably get like 75 bucks an hour if you actually like pull your head out and do it. I swear to God, he was like trying to make me go broke. I mean, he was just <laughs> on it. I mean, I would walk by. He wouldn't even look up. He was just like grinding and grinding and grinding. I know. I was like, man, you're making more than... 90 percent of the world right now <laughs> goals man goals. <laughs> yeah greed <laughs> <Teach them young. laughs> what was the first yeah, so. what was the first car you ever had and a story about that car oh shoot uh we had like, that thing was amazing it was a 67 <laughs> cougar a 67 cougar like straight piece of shit um my dad <laughs> <laughs> built the motor for it like 25 years prior and the guy like randomly called my dad right before high school started and i was like 16 so my dad went over there and bought it and the motor ran like a bat out of hell it was a 289 my dad built and i think he built it for the guy's daughter so she like babied it but this car was such a piece of shit red paint that looked orange flaking off and it had like a white vinyl top that was just all ripped to shreds and the seat like fell back where I had to put a plastic crate behind it to hold it up. Um, but it had like big tires in the back and smalls in the front. <laughs> and my friends gave me like two 12 inch speakers. I put them in the trunk and I had like the tape deck with the, you know, you put the tape in and you have the CD player down <laughs> below that like vibrated. And so all I had was like, two six by nines two twelves in this piece of shit cougar upholstery ripped and i mean i beat it to death i did everything i broke the rear end because i was going so fast around the corner hit a curb and the the nine inch rear end split (laughs) (laughs) and i was like dad i don't know i mean i don't know i think it like like rusted out or something (laughs) driving down the road Uh. i think i was going like 40 miles an hour on this curve going on to the freeway. And I went up the, like the walk, you know, split it, caught some air on the rear end. Another time I was in it on, and we were just like burning out in the parking lot to the point where the tire blew up. And I mean, (laughs) shredded. (laughs) And and again, I was like, dad, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I did a tiny burnout, and I don't know. It just popped. When did you? Tired. When did you last replace these things, Dad? I mean, the day code is all through your shit. Uh, so my screwed. dad's just looking at me, and he's like, "You think I'm fucking stupid?" And I'm like, oh, "Shit, Any, I'm dead." Anytime I'm dead. you say I'm you dead. did a tiny burnout, you're all, you know you're downplaying it. <laughs> you're like the tiniest but, little one. So, <laughs> so it was really cool because it was a really peppy like 289, and my friend had this Challenger. Uh, 70 or 67 67 challenger it was actually the um the car used for blade that movie blade uh with wesley snipes you know tax evader guy um 
<laughs> Josh, Josh is a huge Snipes fan. Hey, Passenger 57. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every time I go over to Josh's yeah. house, we got to watch Passenger 57. Big, big Snipes <laughs> geek. Yeah. He was the bad guy in uh, Stallone movie. Yeah. A Demolition Man. Demolition yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a great movie. Yeah. That had a boss 429 Mustang in it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I actually drag raced that car in front of my high school that smoked them. Smoked them. That car was a turd. But my friend sold it to the movies. And after they finished Blade, they're like, hey, do you want to buy it back? And he's like, and they offered it back for like five grand. He's like, oh, I don't want it. You guys beat the shit out of it. And then needless to say, it became iconic and sold for, you know, six figures on uh, Meekum or something. Yeah. But it was a there. turd of a car. What, yeah. what were you what were you listening to with the two twelves in the trunk? Just oh give us the year first. Uh, uh, it was nineteen ninety four. Nineteen ninety four-ish. It's probably uh, it's like Pac and Biggie. No, no. Yeah, Pac Pac Biggie, two short, you know, all the ninety three, ninety four, yeah. Yeah, four, ninety four was all that, yeah. It was all that good rap music that I still listen to. You didn't listen to Pig about Biggie out there. Yeah, you get shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you did. You did at the beginning until it turned into a gang war. Yeah, Plus, I mean, I shouldn't have listened to any of that. I was a, I was a ninety-five pound little white kid with a big head in a in a cougar. I should. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, you, so, mean, you thought you were a part of that, like East Coast West Coast rivalry. Remember that? Like, no, I did. Like, that was legit. You know, you, like, this shit's not in. I, I, I knew now. where. Like, I knew where. This I shit's did. going down. Right? Like we can't. <laughs> And we were kind of right in the middle. So, and then Bone Thugs <laughs> yeah. came in and rocked the Cleveland. Yeah, Bone and Thugs and Harmony. Yeah, all that. I was stuff. squarely and safely on the sidelines, just completely watching <laughs> on the Florida Georgia sidelines. No, no. no. <laughs> what? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry. What's a best car movie and why? My best car movie. Oh, Fast and Furious 10, because they went to space. Oh, no, just kidding. Dude, that, that was awesome when they were in space. <laughs> Who's the guy? I haven't seen it. It's, it's, and, and, it's and, hilarious. But, is it? like, funny, it's hard funny to believe that they is, did that. Like, Paul, Paul Walker's <laughs> buddy is my friend. I went to high school with Paul Walker's buddy, Caleb. I mean, Paul Walker's brother, sorry. So I, I met Paul Walker way before he was a movie star. And I've known the whole family, and they're super nice people. Uh, Caleb Walker is a buddy of mine since he has been in my class, for like for a long time, all through high school. Mild flex. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so fa- Flake, favorite Flake's movie. Never one to show off and name favorite that he's favorite, favorite car movie. He's not even a, Caleb's. Caleb's not even a celebrity. He's just a nice person. Uh, <laughs> but we we're talking about car people, car movies. Uh, favorite. Favorite car movie? Grease Lightning, I guess. I do. All, and uh, do you call Karate Kid a car movie? Because yes. I mean, that, Could be. hmm. I I love that car. I mean, yeah. I want one. What was that? The like 40 40? Ford convertible with the flathead. Oh, okay. and, and I want one. Like I I picture I'm gonna get one eventually. I see him pop up with the yellow and the tan top, and that's just like one I want. That's like I mean I enjoyed the it's a good movie. Yeah, I enjoyed the movie. DeLorean, Dude, honestly, like you know, even, Back to the Future. You but, don't like that movie? Oh, I love the movie, but oh, even back then, oh, I like I was into cars as yeah, a kid, and I even remember saying like, "That's a fucking old old car." Like, what what the hell is that? Like, I mean, when he no, was like polishing, when he went into the like the yard it. with all those cars. Yeah, I mean, I was just like, "Oh shit, these things are cool, full fendered, you know, curvy." Maybe I related because he was a skinny guy with a big head. Like back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so you you just had to grow into the head. Is that what you? Yeah, uh, yeah. It took many years. I mean, it was after high school. <laughs> yeah, when, I, <laughs> when I was a sophomore in high school, I tell you, my my son right now, who's eighth grade, is bigger than me as I was a sophomore. I was five foot five, ninety eight pounds. Sophomore in high school is great. A lot of fun. What size hat did you wear in baseball? Uh back then or now now I'm, shit it's getting too big it's seven and three quarters that's big that's a big that's a big head that's, that's a fucking dome but you know the, the benefit of it <laughs> like is it's toothpaste. always on the shelf you know it's not a very popular yeah. size so it's 
always in stock. <laughs> now, is that uh, inflated due to ego, or is that natural head size? <laughs> no, it's like Barry Bonds, you know, you're taking up steroids and everything starts growing. <laughs> uh, what's, what's in your pocket right now? You got to do a pocket dump. Nothing. I got, I got nothing. You got nothing? I'm at my own house. I don't, I don't need anything in my pocket. I'm in my house. <laughs> All right. We'll just... What do I need? <laughs> I got my AirPod case on the. I'm gonna do a variation of the next question. Okay. Uh, and we normally do favorite SEMA story. Um, favorite good guys Pleasanton story. It's uh, very pinpointed uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you can just oh. the bar scene. Um, oh man. Oh yeah. Uh, the Cougar Bar is the best up there in <laughs> this place opens at six and closes at like 10 and it's a dead ass Cougar Bar. Like we've, we've been in there a few times and it's hilarious because you basically have to be over 50 to go in and it has cabanas and everybody's in their zoot suits and live band. I mean, it's, it's, it's popping. It's so much fun. And then 10 o'clock you're over and it's like, all right, let's go home. Remember uh, for the next day, we and now out. I fit in. Now I'm the clientele. <laughs> <laughs> we went no like suit, three years in a row, and every year there would be uh, dude is like a combination. Doc of Brown, Prince, yeah, Prince what, and Richard Pryor. What about with a DeLorean? Yeah, that, yeah. With a yeah DeLorean? Doc Brown, yeah. Doc Sitting Brown. Sitting out front. That's his name. <laughs> Damn. And he's got an afro, and he wears the suit, and he and he just posts up on his DeLorean in front of the place. Uh. It's awesome. I got pictures with Chris and him. <laughs> He was like a black Richard Petty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'd go in and he'd be sitting out front and you'd come out three hours later and he's still sitting out front on the hood of his DeLorean. And I swear to God, every single time he was like letting the girl in the in his DeLorean on the way out. Like he didn't even go in to spend a dime, but he had one coming in the car. I mean, it worked like a charm. <laughs> That guy's got like Wilt Chamberlain numbers, you know. <laughs> Those are up there, man. That's good numbers. numbers. <laughs> All right. So next up, we're doing. We've done this segment uh, once or twice before. It's something new for us. So we're gonna do this it's called taking shots. We gotta get the brought to you Still by House Still House, House, right? Look at you. Are you prepared? I'm spilling my book here. Yes, you're, I'll let you pour the shots. Yeah, we're going to do some taking shots. This is the deal, Mike. We're going to ask you uh, some questions, right? And you're going to give your answer. And if we like your answer, which we probably won't, but if we, <laughs> then we're going to give our own answer. And then you can come back with the same thing. You can ask us the same, same questions. Oh, tall boy, right? You poured it all the way to the top. All right, first up. Okay, pussy. All right. <laughs> Mike, what is your... Daily driver. Uh, Ford F two fifty. Okay, it's kind of kind of standard. Any mods on that or that stock? Just stock F two fifty. Black. No. It's got yeah. all the crap on it. This one's difficult because Mike is kind of a hardcore hot rod guy, so it's difficult to come up with something. I I envisioned a older model Ford Econo line with like the old school faded H and H. Like he's driving the shop van. Mike's not that so. cool. Like, Mike's not that cool. <laughs> no, not like, not, like the cool, not like the cool Econo line, like 92 okay. Econo line. Like okay. the square. Oh, okay. Yeah, like white gotcha. and the faded. Yeah. Like right when it started not being cool. Uh, yeah. Not like the old grill. <laughs> no, like, no, not the old grill. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, my, mine's the one with all the bells and whistles and the running boards that come down and moonroof and all that kind of crap. I, a little bougie. I was took my shot. <laughs> I was going to yeah, it's a bougie 250. <laughs> I was going a totally different angle on that. Really? Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking. Okay. And I think this probably exists somewhere. It's it. There might be a secondary garage at the house that it's parked in. 95 SL 500 Mercedes. Okay. That's the good. Thing. All right, but, but listen to me now. Listen, lice vanity plate. H M. Ghost space R U N. Home run, oh. All right? <laughs> and I think that it's he can't quite let go of like his baseball career, right? Like it, you. it, it almost happened, you know. And he loves building flatheads, but there's still that like that Scotty, little, uh, Scotty yeah. Pippen era. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I still, uh, I still throw the ball once in a while. I will I, not play baseball ever again in my life. So I could see him going out. That's the, in the, that's the weekend. That's car. Actually, I take that back. I do play in my alumni game once in a while. Uh, well, men's league baseball, huh? Oh, we get hammered. It's so fun. Talk a lot of trash to 18 year olds. <laughs> Phil, it's your turn. You got to take a shot. Uh, I, I took my shot, oh, but I'll, I'll double down on my shot. Um, I unfortunately am dead on. I, I look at you and I just picture F two fifty Harley Davidson edition. And that's just, that you. was my last one. I traded that one. In. <laughs> <laughs> You saw that truck, though. You've been in that I know, truck, but like, Bill. I, I just don't know crap. there's a better You've been vehicle. In that truck on the road. <laughs> I don't know there's a better vehicle that fits you. Is that like mashing Harley Davidson jacket that goes with it? It is a t shirt. <laughs> okay. I don't think Mike's ready to step up to the jacket yet. Oh. Oh, no, no I'm feeling good about my pull. I think that's all I right. Think this, you, now you, gotta, a, you can yeah, ask us field. the same the same thing if you'd like. Or a different yeah, question. Fire away. Yeah, fire yeah. away. Well, I, I know Phil has a minivan, so I mean, he's a soccer mom. That's <laughs> uh, a Honda Odyssey. Of and, it, it, and it has a little pedals like from uh, Big Trouble Little Tokyo. <laughs> the, kid had the blocks on the pedals so he could hit them. <laughs> It's fucking brand loyalty. It's a Mazda MPV oh, with yeah. a slight lift on it. Okay. Oh, yeah. The old MPV. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know what you guys drive. You guys have weather out there, so you guys have to have like four by fours and stuff. We don't see snow. It's all yeah. just highway. Yeah, you got to have some. If it rains, terrain. people start freaking out. Yeah. All terrain shit up here for sure. <laughs> uh, hey, what, what do you think Josh is driving on a daily? Oh, Josh. I'm sorry, Josh. But I think you are definitely like a, a 1997 like Lexus LS. Oh. Crap. <laughs> See, like I would, I wouldn't even let my mom drive that thing anymore. It's like that gold and, and darker brown on the bottom. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> You think he's he's still he's using it as like a hard flex, right? Like he's yeah. it's a luxury yeah. car. That's still that's a yeah, five yeah. minute conversation with the valet guy about yeah. like listen, all right. That's, that's, got the gold package. That's real oh, pearl yeah. wood inside. <laughs> you said a lot of hurtful things, but that's probably one of the worst. Do you take the gold valve stem that caps off that when you park it? Kind of yeah, you don't want anybody to steal that. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty good. Have you ever stole chromies off of a car in a parking lot? <laughs> yeah, back in the day. <laughs> no. Uh, definitely don't steal. <laughs> so next up, what is your guilty pleasure, hobby, or favorite album to listen to? Oh, my favorite album that I listen to uh, all the time is probably like the Lumineers. I listen to that stuff over and over and over. It's that yeah. happy kind of like, yeah, we, I just saw them not too long ago at the Staple Center or Crypto Center. And uh, I like that kind of music a lot, a lot. So. Do you listen to them but I do. while you're like pruning your impeccable but, rose garden out behind the house with your shears? And I think he does some gardening. I do have some garden. good. I do, I do have some good roses. Do you? <laughs> no, you do yeah. not. <laughs> oh, that'd be two for two. <laughs> well, my white picket fence, you know, my, my roses look pretty good. <laughs> uh, but right above that is the jacuzzi and the, and the you know, all the other stuff. <laughs> I, uh, but, yes. I think, I just see, you might not listen to this regularly, but I can see nobody's at the shop. You might be working late on a weekend or something like that. Your guilty pleasure is there's two or three Lady Gaga songs that you just rock oh, out to. Bleh. Rock out. Bleh. I don't know, dude. I Lady Gaga. On her. I'm seeing a different. Mm -hmm. what do you I'm got? not. I'm not like seeing eye to eye with you tonight. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's never. still. It's still. I would a, never. It's still. A, She's so crazy. That girl is so crazy. <laughs> It's a similar deal, yeah, right? Gaga. Fan. She can sing though. I think he leaves the shop. He comes yeah. home. Okay. 
Okay. And plus, you never catch me working late Friday night. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, you know, so you just a complete miss on that one. <laughs> three fifteen, three thirty. He comes home. Okay. Yeah. Goes into the garage. We yeah. saw it's a little outbuilding. Okay. Right. He's, he's, he's got that model A out there. Maybe okay. a little Tracy Chapman. Tracy Chapman might be like my my biggest soft flex. <laughs> I think that he reaches down. Cuffs his jeans. He rolls his jeans up. Oh. Rolls his shirt up oh. a little bit. Okay. Lights a cigarette. Doesn't smoke, but he lights a cigarette oh, and okay. cracks a beer. And Brian sets her a little rockabilly. <laughs> and he starts like. Oh, I don't like, like that guy. Yeah, he starts. Like it's like guy. a mosh pit. He does like a little like mosh pit thing in his garage. <laughs> <It's, laughs> yeah. Actually, it's I, the hot I rod in him. You, know? you got it. You got <laughs> something Brian about Setzer. Brian Setzer? Yeah. Because he actually was supposed to um, have one of my first motors that actually ended up in the Iron Man um, movie. And the guy was building the car for him. And Brian Setzer was like, nah, I don't want it anymore. And they sold it to John Favre. And then it turned into the Iron Man car. So like, that was like my third motor so ever built. There's a built. connection there, it, right? So it's, I'm not that far off. It was supposed to go to Brian Setzer, but he backed out. And so, so that's like, it's, dude, you ever wonder, bad, it's man. those little things in life that can change the course of the future. You know, like if yeah. that, if he would have taken that motor, it he'd been. be in the garage no one listening no one to been. Brian Setzer. Yeah. Yeah. He'd have been a huge Brian Setzer fan. Yeah. Butterfly effect. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow. Hey, that's pretty good. Good one. Yeah. Real good. Yeah. Uh, all right. It's yours. Who you went with the Rose Garden? I like the Rolling Stones. Yeah, play off Jer a little bit. I could see him getting in that uh, that Mercedes. You, you call it a Merc, though, right? A little street. Cred. My my buddy, <laughs> my best friend from my best friend since kindergarten. His dad had like eight Mercedes. Like he was rolling, and he had this one. It was like a '88, '90, where they just changed the body style. It had it was all white, white rims with that like honeycomb rims. Windshield wipers on the headlights. Yeah. I mean, navy blue upholstery. I still want that car. It's still, oh, it yeah. looks like a drug runner. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's so bad. Those so, windshield wipers. That's the one thing I've always felt that I needed. Yeah, windshield wipers on yeah. the headlights. Every time I'm driving Hell, in the rain, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Hey, dude, if I just had fucking windshield like wipers, wipers. <laughs> windshield wipers. I can see. Yeah. I'd be doing shit. I'd, I'd be doing 100 miles an hour right now. Like, uh, this one's that just coming to bad. me here. It, it started with with the song that I think you're listening to in the Mercedes, but coming up on Halloween, how many years in a row have you been Iceman listening to Iceman? No. Major Zone? <laughs> yeah. no, no, my costumes are you way worse look, than I, that. Yeah. Okay. Way worse than that. All right. What and we... Actually, I just got called that the other day. I was walking around uh, with my girlfriend and <laughs> someone <laughs> called me that. They're like, Hey, Top Gun. <laughs> It's, this is this is like, why it's I, fucking I almost got mad, but then I was like, "Oh, thanks, buddy." <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> See, that's that's the that's the only reason that this segment exists because I'm telling you, it doesn't seem like it right now. There's some, but there's the body of there. we're, it's our hidden we, talent. We have a gift, right? And I think oh, that yeah. I think that over time, the body of work will show that. <laughs> yeah, it will. You know, if if this wasn't going to be on the internet forever, the stories get. A hundred times worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody listened. Dude, I think yeah. we just broke double digit listeners. So you don't have to worry about it. I'm good. Yeah, your mom and your wife. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Next up. What TV show are you embarrassed to say that you regularly watch? Ooh, I don't even watch that much TV. So, um, um... yeah, we'll answer for you. <laughs> Dodger games. I'm embarrassed to watch them sometimes. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't watch too much TV at all. If I turn on Game of Thrones, it puts me to sleep. I guess I watch Game of Thrones. That's not, but that's not embarrassing. No, it's not embarrassing. Uh, but I don't, I don't watch much TV. Hmm. Yeah, TV is just like... Like he says, not it a lot just puts me to sleep. Like my, my kids like run me days. around, you know, we're doing so much stuff with baseball and, you know, weightlifting and softball and cooking them dinner. By the time I get like done with that, it's just like you pass out with homework and all that other stuff. If you if the, if the girlfriend, if the girlfriend's over and you're sitting there and she wants to watch something, what's something that you 
you've had to have binge watched something in in recent in the last year. He's got the mm. box set of Friends on DVD. Oh no, I've never even watched that show. It's trash. Um, <laughs> Friends is trash. <laughs> Uh, I guess Game of Thrones. Um, hmm. Oh, um, on HBO, they had a really good one about the end of the world. Can't remember the name of it this time. Hmm. Just don't watch too much. Draw a blank. You got something? Houston? I, yeah, I'm wor- I'm, yeah, I'm working with some working it I'm, out. I'm rolling it around in my head. Okay. I, I throw just, out some names and maybe I watch them. I just keep going back to the baseball thing. Major I, League. I think no. I think that oh, I've watched them under all. under the bed, game. under the bed. There's a bat Hidden? bag. There's a bat bag. Like oh, a sh- what's it? East. Shoot. Uh, what's the name of it? Easton. Easton. Easton bat. Yeah, Easton bat bag. Underneath and the under the bed, and it is full of baseball VHS box? tapes okay. of Pete Rose okay. highlight reels. Heat ropes. Yeah. He likes, so he likes watching like the confrontation, (laughs) like the bad boy image. You know, he puts them in, he's like, he gets a quick giggle. (laughs) I'd say it'd be maddening. It'd be maddeningly. You think so? Oh, Don Maddeningly was my man. I love that guy. (laughs) Love that guy. Got a fucking That's my favorite player ever. That's my favorite player ever. Don Maddeningly. I have a couple autographed jerseys. I've met him a few times. I used yeah. to bat like him when I was a lefty. I used to like duck my head down. Fucking team effort, he was, man. He was a man. Yeah. Yankee fan. I was a Yankee fan. Oh, yeah. Huh? I could go pull out the jersey right now and put it on. Of course you can. <laughs> but it's, it's, yeah. This is a weird, <laughs> weird <laughs> talent. Did you, have you seen the uh, documentary on Nolan Ryan that just came out? Oh, that was great. Yeah, yeah. that was really good. I love Nolan Ryan. He's such a like a... Texas boy, like he doesn't yeah, give a, a shit. He wasn't ass. there for fame, and he wasn't there for fame. He just kept going and just like no, it was like a, it was a just a, a legit person. job. Like it was that was just yeah. his job. He'd yeah. show up, fucking throw heat. I was the uh huh. I, I wasn't huge in baseball, his, but Nolan Ryan was my man. Yeah, and his wife was just so stable and supportive. I mean, I mean, <laughs> she she just knew. I mean, it was just a whole team effort. Yeah, it was really nice to see. Oh, he didn't do, like, he didn't do, like, I felt like, I don't know what his age was then, but it was like he, he was always like 40. Like years he, was, old. he was always 40 <laughs> about his whole career. Uh-huh. And he just showed up, pitched, and then it's like, all right, I'm going to, you know, head back to the ranch. And so he's doing his own yeah. thing. You know, it's threw a no hitter at like 45, didn't he? Yeah. 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 45. It was like he was going to the crazy. factory, like getting a little punch. Yeah. It's yeah. exactly what it was. He's just going to the factory. He's going to do, he's going to go in, throw heat, and then he's going to head back to the ranch. Like it's, <laughs> It wasn't like I mean, nowadays where you've got these guys that are like basically movie stars and living, you know, living the life and stuff. Mm-hmm. He was just like, I ha- I'm a guy yeah. and I happen to be a pitcher, you know, and that's my job. Yeah. And this is what I that. have to do day in and day out. Yeah. One of the best lines from that to support my family. Yeah. He's like, you know, early to mid 40s and he's talking about this one game. He's like, yeah, I'm going out there, I'm throwing really good. Turn over to the, uh, rest of the team you go, guys just get one run that's all you're going to need to win tonight but with all that yeah, yeah. with all that grinder like he was a killer like killer instinct like it was oh, yeah. like mm-hmm. would did not want to lose didn't want i mean he he had that but at the same time it was kind of like it was so it's just such oh, a yeah. job kind of thing reminds you george a lot yeah yeah very much just just i tried to instill that with my son because nowadays everybody's like travel ball and blah 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 and what's your stats and i'm like that shit does not matter it does not matter you grind and you don't tell people what you're doing keep grinding keep working and this will show right in life in everything like when i started my business i worked 100 hours a week like constantly and my dad was there to help me and i mean we worked seven days a week till I mean, three meals a day at the shop because we're there three meals a day and working to the early morning of the night. But you didn't tell people. It wasn't social media. You weren't going like, oh, live yeah. streaming at 10 right. o'clock at night kind of bullshit. Look at me at midnight. But, but, yeah, you, that's, but now you did I'm it. here where I am because of that work and that groundwork that I put in. Yeah, you and, did it because uh, you, you had to do it and you knew that's what was getting the leg up, not because... 
you thought somebody was looking or you could use it as a post. You know, there was no, no I post. wanted to outwork, outwork my competition. Right. And I knew if I put in more hours and did, you know, quality work, you outwork them. And there's a lot of people that want this hype and the instant gratification and this notification of being on a magazine, this and that, you know, and they made it. And no, that's, that's the start. Yeah. That's not the finish. That's the start. The finish is when you get to retire or give your business to your kid and give them a successful life also. I mean, that's the finish when you, when you actually are successful, when you can pass it down to a, another generation, like your dad. Yeah. He finished strong. Like, you know, yeah. he made, he, that's, that's the goal to be like him, to be, you know, work, work, work and, and provide something strong enough to give your kids a, a leg up on another. Like, I mean, obviously he didn't hand you anything. He handed you a work ethic and exactly. an opportunity yep. to make this. That's right. And exactly that's what my right. dad too. He, he worked super hard to give me an opportunity. He didn't give me a business. There was nothing. Like I started from nothing, but he gave me an opportunity and showed me a work ethic, which is, I mean, you know, second, second to none. And, and people don't do it nowadays. They want everything given to them. Uh, and so it's, it's truly a blessing from getting it from a different generation and a different era of work, work, work. And that's, I, I, I truly believe that's the finish line. That's the goal is I want to be able to pass something on to my kids. Like I know my daughter's not going to be turning a wrench, but maybe I can spawn it into something to give them both a legacy ish. A hundred percent. Dude. I mean, honestly, like you legitimately, whether you know it or not, you probably have one of the best success stories that we've heard yet. Yeah. I mean, you started, you and your old man busted your ass, right? And it's, there's no social media posts. There's no videos, no YouTube videos about it. You just fucking did it, right? And you've created a hell of a business to the point where now you can come home and you can, you're, you're home at three o'clock spending time with your son and you're prepping your son and you're going to give, you're going to leave your son with something that's phenomenal where he can pick up. And is he going to build flathead Ford V8s? You know, pro he'll probably, you know, evolve that and take it to the next level and do something that you have no fucking idea that could even be done. But he'll right. he'll probably no. supersede with the work ethic that you've instilled in him and the way you're raising him. He'll supersede what you've done, you know, and he'll take it to the next level, which is awesome. That's that's what that's what I'm really working for. That's what I hope. I mean, that's what that's what you want. You want your kids to be better than you. I yeah. mean, basically, you, well, you want to see them have an easier life, a better, a better chance, and everything. You know, it's the whole thing. Talk less, I mean, do more. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be better looking, but I mean, that'd be pretty. Hard yeah, to that's tough, dude. You are, you know, you are gifted, <laughs> and that that's you're, one of those things that pledge man died, dude. <laughs> that's one of those things that was handed to you. You know, you can't say you worked for that. That yeah. was just. You know. I, I think I thank my mama for that. Right. <laughs> Do you ever do you how many times do you remind your brother of how much better looking you are? I don't have to. Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> My oh. mom does that for me. Oh. <laughs> Mike, it's been awesome. Seriously. It's been a great yeah, time. Super cool, dude. You're gonna pleasure. be you're gonna be at SEMA here in a few weeks? Uh I think I'm skipping SEMA, but I'll be at PRI. Okay. Oh, you're coming well, up. You're coming this, what are you doing this PRI? I'm gonna get an award for something. Awesome, dude. Well, we'll hang out there. That's not far from us. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Usually I'm make the run fly down in on Tuesday and get out on Thursday. So on Wednesday, go to Tuesday St. or Wednesday. St. Elmo. I don't even know. I've never been there. I've yeah. never been there. Oh, well, let's. We'll, we'll have, yeah, we'll do a celebration dinner. St. Elmo's. All sure. right, can't yeah. wait. Yeah, we're can't gonna wait. connect down there. India sure. in December, phenomenal. Yeah, Very great, similar to uh, great weather. SoCal there. <laughs> So you're saying I shouldn't roll up my sleeves? No, dude, definitely no, put you're... on like get a big old puffy jacket. Yeah, get your get your uh, get your uh, Raiders starter jacket <laughs> from back in the day, from ninety from ninety four. <laughs> <laughs> Don't t tell me you had no. one. I know you had one. No, I'm not a Raiders fan. No. You got the satin no. Dodgers jacket though. Yeah, I actually I wore it last night at the game with my son. And it was my dad's jacket, and he wore my jacket. 
from back in the day. It was awesome. It was, yeah. And the best thing about it, it said made in the USA on the tag. Hell it wasn't yeah. even like it was like a legit one. That's awesome. Uh, I hope people, I hope people cool. listening realize the talent that is that exists. <laughs> <laughs> this, this isn't this isn't fake. This is real. No. Yeah. All right, Mike. I appreciate it. We'll yeah, see you soon. Awesome. Right, guys. We'll see you, man. Later Thank you. Guys. Thanks. All right. Later, Thank bro. you. I appreciate everything. Big thanks again to Mike Herman. Remember, you can learn more about Mike Herman's H and H Flatheads by checking them out on Instagram at H and H Flatheads Forever. You can find them on Facebook at H and H Flatheads. Also check out their website at hnhflatheads.com. Also find him on Tinder, Hinge, and Grinder at Mike Herman. Home run hero. (laughs) 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 He's going to love that. (laughs) Uh, All right, it's time for the glove box. where We tell you about some of the cool new gear, guns, EDC shit, whiskey, and other stuff that we're into. We have this week, guys. What do you got? What do you got in your pockets? Yeah, what do we got? Oh man, I've been talking a lot about these cleavers, right? Did you, did you go buy you one? No, I didn't buy myself one, but and I've had this out before. Oh. I like this little guy, Kaiser. Yeah, Kaiser, and it's out again. Um, Kaiser Sose? Kaiser Permanente. So I've been, I've been, <laughs> I've been <laughs> shopping right on on Blade HQ, looking at some future purchases. Yep. Kaiser's got some pretty awesome stuff. So they stepped this up to the next size up. This is like a two and a half inch blade, something like that. I think you're supposed to guard by the handle. <laughs> but they've, uh, they got some good stuff. Yeah, it's a reasonably, not handle. like an entry level price point, not up there like, you know, micro techs or bench maids, but, uh, what's this sub 200? Yeah. That's like 80 bucks. Something like that. Oh, is it sub 100? Yeah. You sure? Pretty sure. That's a lot of knife right yeah, hey, Oh, you're goddamn right. It is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great yeah, action. That's got a really good action. It, it's probably one of the better action knives that I've got. Flipper. Brad little knife. You know which Kaiser this is? Oh, man. I wish that I did, but I do not. But it's the one that looks like this. Yeah, it's the one that looks, looks, like yeah, yeah, it's one that looks like just that, like right. that little mini cleaver kind of blade. Uh, the smaller of the cleavers that they offer. It's got a Some CO1C pretty on pretty damn it. damn big. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. do. Got the CO1C on the blade, but the blade's 154 cm, so the CO1C might be a model number, maybe. That's a, that's really nice. Yeah. Give that a run. Yeah, a flip that videos. sucker. <clears throat> Give her a little flip. Flip ski. Yeah, you can that flip it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you can flip it. Go ahead, flip it. Yeah, just like that. Oh, it's done, huh? Yeah. A lot of knife for eighty dollars. Good action on that guy. Yeah, nice like little it. uh, little lever on the fist. That's it, man. Nothing, uh, nothing fresh. Other than that. Hey, there's no shame. Yeah. Phil, you didn't bring the PGS. I Phil did not. I switched, special. I switched it up. Uh, running the uh, Civivi Elementum. Um, the in the flipper game, I think this is probably the best action fidget flipper. You see, I'll uh, be I'll be the judge. Even of that. one of the reviews on Blade HQ. Mm, it's good. Civivi and we has the ultimate yeah. fidget flipper. It's the best it's got like it. weight to it yeah when you flip it yeah yeah it kind of like comes around by itself it does yeah i like that i'm a fan of everything again except the natural g10 but the rest of the knife is badass so i keep rocking it i'm gonna have to get me one of those in, in a different different scale color but man that's i got the same knife and i bought it with the bronze scales or yep. the brushed bronze you don't like the um, weight though do you dude it's like 400 pounds I can't keep my pants up wearing. I, I feel that's a, probably a little bit of an o- over exaggeration. Three eighty ish. Um, I do like that. That yeah, the don't, bear breaks. Don't even the bear breaks. The bear. No, no. Everybody, I was. Everybody's seen the bear breaks. So let me have, see this I was thing. Nervous. Uh, I had let somebody borrow it the other day, and like the whole time I was like a little OCD if I was going to get it back, if I wasn't going to get it back. You're taking it apart. Yeah, Why I am. You do that. So here's here's the deal. This is what I'm dealing with right now. My Bayer pen has died. I've got more refills. Oh, you do? Yeah, my desk. I've gone through like three of them so far. That's fantastic. Because I was gonna, I was gonna reach out to Rick. You can buy those refills. I was gonna reach out to Rick over at Bayer and see if it's it. like it a lifetime. <laughs> like if this is a lifetime <laughs> pen refill. I don't think yeah. so. I think he yeah. figures that he gifts you the pen that you can probably handle okay. the refills. 
I didn't know. That's why he was just about yeah, to swipe my fucking refund. He was. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. It's great. That's great. Speaking of great products and bear breaks, this in the glove box segment is brought to you by Bear Breaks. Oh, good. Plug. Look at that. Look at that plug. Bear breaks. They don't sell pins. So you're kind of shit out of luck there. <laughs> they sell great brakes and everything that it takes to install them except the fluid, but they actually sell that too. The uh, bear brakes, I was, we were just over at the, uh, at the new facility that we'll be, I guess, letting the public know about here fairly soon. The Our new day. facility. Yeah. The other day and uh, yeah, Roadster Shop's new facility. Sorry, confusion, bears, new facility. And uh, looking at the bear wall. I think we're going to have to just name it that at the back, the, the bear wall, the we wall might, of bear. We might have more bear breaks than bear does at the moment. I guarantee fucking tee it. We do. It's, uh, we got some bear breaks, but we got They're bear breaks for, for a reason. Them. Absolutely. Customers love them. Uh, we love them. Uh, we wouldn't be selling them if we didn't. Made right here in the U.S. of A in Phoenix, Arizona. Just, should we give Rick's cell phone number out over the <laughs> pond? Like, if you've got a problem, call Rick. I think he's gonna really enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. It'll be in the show notes. Under the so episode. here's the deal: if you if you're saying if you have a problem, call Rick. There'll be very few phone calls. If Yo, you have right. an order yeah. and you want to call Rick, call Rick. Then he's gonna change his number. You're right because there is no problem. And we're not Seldom, just saying that. Honestly. So here's a great example, right? So Rick, Rick's a solid dude, and I know Rick will respond instantly, right? If you reach out to him, I love Rick to death. I only have to. Reach out to Rick, maybe bi yearly for a, a tech, special favor for a tech phone call. Oh, and typically it's not even like tech related. It's more like, how can we fit this onto something? Yes, else? it's something. It's yeah. a it's a new product, something that I want to tweak, change, I'm do something to do that I know something is out of the ordinary. We right? shouldn't be doing. But, yeah, it's an off menu right. item. <laughs> off menu, right? And <laughs> I want animal animal breaks style. animal style. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, dude. On that note, I had not a huge In and Out fan, but I had just a horrible customer experience the other day. I was talking with a, a customer who's out in, uh, he's in California. We're talking, he goes, yeah, hang on one second. Kind of puts the phone down here. It's slightly muffled. And then he orders from in and out and then picks back. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just at the drive through in and out right now. I, I just didn't want you to have it on the phone during the order. That's kind of a dick move. It is kind of a dick move. It's like we don't have that out here. It's like, yeah, hanging I'm in front just of letting face. you know yeah. that I'm ordering in and out the thing that you don't have. Yeah. I was wondering like where that was going because at first I thought I'm like, this is honestly the worst story I've probably ever heard. <laughs> but then <laughs> when I realized, did he redeem it? Yeah. When I realized that <laughs> I wasn't back. thinking about that part of it, that we don't have in and out, you know, we feel like white castle, we got Burger King. Then you probably could have kept that part. I probably yourself. should yeah. have. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. That might be the worst story <laughs> that I've ever heard. <laughs> Tried to make me look like an ass. I apologize. And instead, you yeah. circle right back. I'm just, you know, to... uh, speak my mind. Well, right? this in the blo- in the glove box segment is brought to you by Bear Breaks. I think we've talked about Bear enough. Again, check down below. You'll see Rick's cell phone number and FaceTime ID, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah, all the other his ad- I think home address is down there right. too, right? Yeah. So Rick, he's more Rick's more of like a face to face guy. So yeah, just, just show up, <laughs> ask Rick, you know, anything. Uh, I'm rocking the uh, Microtech Ultratech. T and E UTX eighty five. This is the ODG reverse Tonto blade or Tonto blade. You just rattled off the entire alphabet. I was I'm, I'm trying just, to give the, saying things. I'm trying to give the everybody. So, do they make that in any color except green? They do. Yeah. They make it in black. And they make it in uh, possibly other colors. So, I know they do make it in black. <laughs> Enlighten me, Josh. Yep. On the back side of these, yep. is that that's a window breaker? Glass breaker. Glass breaker. Absolutely. Have you ever used one? Oh, I bust the shit out of windows. Have you really? Week- yeah, it's just a hobby. On the weekend, I go to like the mall. I go to Woodfield, and it's just. See? You got to go out to like L.A. For, L.A. or downtown Chicago yeah. for that. No, I've never broken. You get away with it. I've never broken glass. We come that. over to your house and try. I would like to try to do it. It's cool. It's got like a little bit of a tumbled finish right on that blade. Yeah, yeah. Which I like. Good that Tonto blade. That's a good looking blade. I like the machine work on the handle. I like I like that knife. It's just a little bit nicer. Yeah, it's almost a little too nice for you. Good looking piece, man. Not nice. Good looking piece. That's what we have as far as in our pockets. Um, what are we drinking? Tell us about it. 
Today we are drinking uh, another bourbon gift, or I guess this would be a rye whiskey gift from uh, Sam from uh, the band Chevelle. Drop this off. Samuel. I think it's just Sam. No, I'm pretty sure it's Samuel. Samuel. Sam Wells. Sam Well. Sam. Samothy. It's Kristen. <laughs> uh, from Sam from Chevelle. So. Sam, also a big, uh, big bourbon fan, um, dropped off the, uh, the Blue Run. This is a special golden rye whiskey. Um, it's pretty hard to find one. New release, 623.22, right there on the top of the bottle. Um, exceptionally, exceptionally complex straight rye whiskey and bottled in Bardstown, Kentucky by Run Spirits, LLC. You can read. I, I, I just read everything yeah. on the bottle. I got all the words there. Great looking bottle. Really good looking bottle. I think they're a relatively newer brand and a few uh, few out there, but um, doesn't it t- doesn't taste young to me? Is there an age statement? It doesn't also doesn't taste like rye. That's no, the first. Yeah. So, I sometimes I wish like people would tell me that this was a gift, right? Because I start spouting off and saying hurtful things at the beginning, and I said it's. Damn it, it's a rye, right? So I don't and typically you actually threaten to put it back. Well, I don't <laughs> typically drink rye whiskeys. You know, I use them for there's great cocktails you can make with rye whiskey, but it, it it's honestly like really, really good. Yeah. I would have never pegged that. Usually the like the palette on rye, it's like really, really complex. There's a lot of like it's every single most, flavor yeah. is going on, which is why I, I typically don't drink them, but I you're that's boring. a man that's a that's an absolute standout it is very good it's very it's i will say it's the best rye i've ever had neat yeah, and right. i would <clears throat> say that it ranks way up there you know against some of the best bourbons I've had. that's a good it's very good it doesn't it doesn't have your normal super spicy rye some people like rye but like you said uh but it doesn't taste young you, it just doesn't it doesn't taste super fucking old but it, it doesn't taste young um I enjoyed it. I enjoyed a little spice. I'm going to give it, I'm not even going to look at the card and see where we're going to place it at. I'm just going to give it a number. And that number is six, nine. Mm. I'm north of there, dude. Yeah. I think you're a little low. Yeah. I was going seven, five. Whoa. Yeah. Are you really? I am. Hold on. Let's try another. Take it again. It's smooth, right? It's 95 proof. It, it, there's a lot of good things going for it. Don't do that in the microphone. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. It's got, <laughs> it's got a lot of going for it. It's 95 proof. It doesn't burn. It's super smooth. It's just good it, flavor, not too much. Yeah, the flavor is like exactly. It's, it's well put together. I'm just going to, I think Phil's spot on with that, honestly. I think Phil, yes. Phil, Phil brought it with that 7.5. I could go up, down, I could say 7.4, 7.6. I'm going to just, I'm going to stick with a 7.5. It's a pretty good review. Josh kind of feels like an asshole right now. I mean, it's not everybody's got their own like perception of what you know. Oh, and everybody has their I own palette. I right? guess I don't want the number six nine to look like a negative. I really, really liked it. I just that's my number yeah. seven five seven five and a six nine. I could have probably been a seven zero. Oh. You know what? Let's, let's just bump you. Yeah, let's just bump you up, man. Let's make it a seven, seven, oh. seven five. Yeah, I don't want you to drag that average down. Yeah, but it, re- it really the real the real review is. Absolutely, snag that. It's a higher price point bourbon, right? Because you, you see it in the uh, it's in the glass, glass case, case at section. Benny's, yep. right? So if you're if you're going to Benny's, glass case. If you're heading over to Garfield's Liquor Emporium, Emporium, <laughs> beverage, Garfield's, beverage Emporium, Garfield's Beverage Warehouse and Superstore. Uh, I don't know that you're going to have to. I don't think I don't <laughs> think you're going to have to deal with all the BS. Of, it's a behind the counter. Yeah, it's going to be sitting right there. Garfield's Liquor Emporium and yeah. Beverage Superstore. That's the new name. Tell me that's not the fucking new I think name. Dave's gonna punch. Dave's a passive guy, right? Somebody's. Gonna, I think he's gonna punch you in the face. If you search after that. up get Garfield's liquor, you and beverage store and liquor emporium, you're not gonna find it. You're telling me it's gonna give you to another one. Is there another company named that? It's like the Roadster Warehouse Factory. No, if store. you were Road, store, yeah, Roadster, the Roadster <laughs> Shop, Roadster Shop, uh, Magical Factory. You would come up with the yeah no that's shop. fine keep it up because we're right here in the Ooh, smack dab like pinnacle of bourbon release season oh, stop 
So as no, Dave, no. No, 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 as, Dave, trying, as Dave starts you're trying bringing, to create a problem that there's no, I'm not, not a problem. No, I'm not. As yeah, Dave starts getting his hands on some of these, you know, awesome releases. Because you know he's going to get two, and you're trying exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's yeah. going to be like, and Josh just murders my. my I talk about name. his company more than you do. I say his name more. I might add things at the end, but I say his name more. <laughs> All right. At any rate, Dave, we I'm, I'm are, with you right here. <laughs> we are big fans. Blue yeah. Run. Kentucky straight rye. All over the country, wherever you're at. If you're in the Chicagoland area, the Garfields, get over to Garfield's beverage warehouse, snag yourself a bottle. They're going to find it. They'll find it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, They'll find it. It's good. It's a buy it. That's a buy it. You're going to shovel out a few more bucks, but buy that one. Buy it. And it's a good looking bottle. Buy it. Seek it out. You think that's a different, uh, that's brass there. It's, brand. it's tarnished. I think it's it's got a little like uh, Josh's reputation. A little for bit getting of, good bourbon from Dave. Yes, it's tarnished. Absolutely tarnished. He and yeah. Dave are boys. War boys. He knows a joke. He knows a <laughs> joke. War, war boys. Yeah, he knows a joke. So. Yeah, it's fine. So be it. All right. Thanks for listening to Oil and Whiskey with the Roadster Shop. Oh. You're telling me we got to the whole pack podcast and you never even say anything I, about my shirt. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't feel the need to humiliate you. Everybody's looking. I mean, yeah. it's a, if you're watching it on video, what is that thing? I see a skull, uh, like a skeleton with a pinata with a, a pinata. Uzi has no pinata. An that's Uzi an with a sombrero. That's a, that's a sombrero. And an, an Uzi and an AK. So enlighten me, Josh. Yeah, Tell, it's, give, like a, yeah. it's like a fun, loving shirt. Like, hey, yeah, guys. that's very loving. I like to have yeah. fun. Yeah, like like Uzis, skulls. It's a you know, sombreros, AK forty sevens. It's the Sicario shirt from Warm and Fuzzy. So, what's Warm and Fuzzy? It's a cool ass brand that you probably don't know nothing about because you don't know cool things. Super cool, super underground for cool people. Yeah. I get, hey, it's like for badasses. Poking like, a bear right there. I got it. It's. If you like the show, be sure to leave us a rating and review. Get out quick. Get out quick. <laughs> Wrap this thing up, man. End, end. Wrap this thing up. Uh, Why don't you stand up for everybody? Hey, stand thanks up. again to our guest, Mike Herman. We'll see you again next week.